Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. So today we're going to have our 10 highest ranked videos from the month of November. This is the third of this particular series and the last two have been very well received, so thank you very much for that. Yep, so these are our highest review scores for the month. Coming in at number 10 then was New Super Lucky's Tale, which was reviewed for us by Dave, a good friend of the channel. This is a 3D platformer, of course, originally on the Xbox. I believe it was an Xbox One X launch title, and is a very enjoyable experience on the Switch. A couple of things that let it down, A, it's a little bit easy, and B, the price is potentially a bit too high for some, but all in all, a very good game, and it received a Switch Up score of 80%. At number nine then, we have Woven, which unfortunately for it really, it dropped in amongst some great games that were launching, but Evan really enjoyed it. It has a very interesting mechanic whereby you can switch out the different parts of your creation and it affects the way that you blend into the world around you. I like the art style of this one. It reminds me visually a little bit of a Little Big Planet title, but it's controlled from a third person perspective. As I say, some interesting mechanics and it looks to be quite a nice adventure and it scored 82%. Coming in at number eight for the month then was the game Sparklight. Now this is an adventure game, top down adventure game, similar in some respects to something like an older The Legend of Zelda title with a beautiful pixel drawn aesthetic. In this game, every time you return to the surface after dying, the world around you will change, it's procedurally generated. Although the main assets of the level, such as dungeons, will stay in there somewhere and you have to kind of piece the world back together every time. There are badges that you can buy to help you do this, they will highlight where certain places are and you have to defeat the five guardians to bring peace to the land. A very good game with a wonderful aesthetic and it got 82%. Next up we have Pokemon Sword and Shield. Now Evan reviewed this for us and in particular we chose him to do it because he's such a massive Pokemon fan. He's played all of the games since, well, what was the first one? It was Red and Blue, wasn't it? I think it was. So he's played all of the games and he did enjoy it. Now, like many, he felt that perhaps the overworld wasn't quite as fleshed out as it could have been, but nonetheless there was more than enough content for him. The lack of some of the more well-known Pokemon is again a bit of a slight issue for him, but again it didn't detract from his overall experience and he gave the game 85%. Coming in at 6th place then for the month was Atelier Riser. Now this just missed the cutoff point to be in last month's video, otherwise it would have been one of the highest scoring games of that month. And it's of course an RPG, part of a very long running series. Another one reviewed by Evan and another game that he very much enjoyed. You take control of a group of friends and it's quite a ordinary world that you're within. You're just trying to get out of the small town and he really enjoyed it, didn't he, this one? He did indeed and it also got a score of 85%. Thank you. 
Number five then for the month was Alien Isolation. Now this of course came out originally back on the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 and received a remastered version for current gen consoles including now of course the Switch. Now this game just goes to show what can be achieved with licenses when there's not the pressure to get a game out to meet the opening weekend of a movie at the theatres. When you have that time to come up with a good idea and implement it well, you get a game as fantastic as this one. The use of the alien creature is one of the best I've ever seen in any horror game and although it does become slightly repetitive towards the end, it's still a very very well made game and it received a switch up score of 85%. Alright, coming in at number 4 then, we have WRC8, which is World Rally Championship 8 on the Nintendo Switch. Now, our good friend Jace, the one and only, reviewed this one for us, and while the visuals aren't quite up to snuff, the gameplay and overall performance is quite good. Also, the whole simulation aspect of it is done brilliantly. It's a really tricky game, and some people complain that the physics weren't quite up to par for them, but overall for us, we really enjoyed this one. It does have, and it's worth noting, the same engine as the V-Rally game that came out on the Switch. I think they could potentially do a bit of work on the next one, but as we say, if you're a fan of the WRC, you're going to enjoy this immensely. It scored 86%. That takes us on to The Tourist, which was our number three game this month, and that's from Shinen Games. These are the guys that bought us Fast RMX. This is a really nice title. I described it as being a touch like Little Big Adventure, if you've ever played those games. It follows a very relaxed pace. You take on the role of a new tourist to an island, and then begin to uncover the mysteries of these monuments that dot the different lands. It's really nice, between each island you take a small boat ride and there are small side quest missions to undertake. It's just a very relaxed and kind of quirky game that hooks you from start to finish. It scored 88%. Another review that I did then was Children of Mortar, which is our number two game. Some people have described this as potentially the best indie game of the year. I think that might be a little bit of a stretch, but having said that, I did enjoy it a great deal. It's almost like an old school Diablo, so if you know your Diablo 1 or 2s, it's an action RPG, but you control it directly rather than with a, obviously a mouse and keyboard and clicking onto enemies. You take on the role of the Bergson family who are battling against the dark evil, you know the drill that's corrupted the land. There is a bit of procedural generation here as well as RPG mechanics as you level up your party. What I liked about it was that your stat boosts could affect the entire family so you didn't feel like you were wasting your efforts and if you overplayed a character they began to get less powerful making you rely on the other ones as well. It received an overall switch up score of 89% and I believe you can find it physically as well. This is for me one of the essential indie pickups for the year. And our number one for the month then, it's a game that technically came out last month, it came out on the last day of last month, but our review was in November, and that's of course Luigi's Mansion 3. Now, this is a game that many people have said is possibly Nintendo's finest of the year. It builds on everything that the previous Luigi's Mansion games have done, and also streamlines it a little bit in some respects in that you're back into one setting as opposed to the various settings of the second game on the 3DS. It has a beautiful art style, and so much character and charm, everything that you would associate with a Nintendo game and is well worth picking up and it was our top scorer for the month with 92%.
So there you have it. Those are the top 10 scores for us on Switch Up this month. Some really nice titles there. And it's nice to see a few that weren't really expected, like The Tourist. We didn't really know how that one was going to come out. And it shone, really, amongst the crowd. That's why it's nice doing this video, because it does give some of the games, like Woven, for example, a second chance to shine, doesn't it, as Definitely. well? Definitely. Um, but thank you, everyone, for watching these videos so far. We really do enjoy making them. A quick thank you to our Patreons, as always, for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. And we'd also like to thank Evan, Will, Dave, and Jace, who are other writers for us. And they've really helped us out this month with the amount of content we've had to get out. Absolutely right. For all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya.